Right now you might be thinking, I saw her on that other channel and she said she was going to stalk me and now here she is again. Stalk word. I'm Stalk word Channing. This is my dog, Sally Field, so named for her ears that make her look like the flying nun when they go back. Sally is usually in the background in my videos, but today I brought her for the foreground. That's my very clever segue into my first Atheist Hub pick of the week. The vlogger I chose really does belong in the foreground of Atheist Vlogging on YouTube. Her name is Practical Magic 9 and her information is going to be down there in the description box. And you're going to be so glad I picked her. In fact, I'm kind of proud that she's the person I picked for Atheist Hub because you're really going to enjoy her. She tells her story so well. It's like a professional radio broadcast. Of course, if you like her more than me, I will turn on her faster than you can say I'm a minute. Without further ado, I invite you to lay back on the grass and look at clouds with Gizmo and Practical Magic 9. Hello YouTube, Practical Magic 9 here, getting ready to tell my, my story. If you find it boring, I won't be offended. I think I'm doing this more for myself which is probably the best reason to do it um, but I'm I'm hoping that by telling my story about my life as a theist and all of the ways it impacted my life and the decisions I made and if it sounds like a cautionary tale which I think it does uh, well then all the more reason to put it out there I guess I hope that if a theist who is asking questions, who finds themselves constantly asking questions and yet wanting to be this good Christian person, um, if they recognize themselves in my story, I hope it gives them permission to ask those questions, to realize that's not the devil needing to be exercised and that's not a spirit of doubt invading their mind because it's reason that knocks at your mind. It's not the devil. Um, and you know what? I mean, the heart is a fickle thing. People put so much value on your feelings and on your heart and on your gut. And one of the best things that's happened in my life since I deconverted, because I deconverted, was rational thinking. Um, it's It's been a huge help. I don't always show it <laughs> to everybody around me, but I like I like that I can sit down and say, wait, that doesn't seem true, that doesn't seem right, you know, to myself, like when my feelings try to take over. So um, I hope that what I have to say here might help an atheist, even lifelong atheists. I'm sure there must be people out there who've never gone to church and don't see the reason, and they probably are only interested in meeting with other atheists uh, to make sure that there's not, like, laws passed that... <laughs> You know, that theists get in office or something. Um, they're, it's because it's not, it's not, interest, it's not interesting, actually, to think about it, to define yourself by what you don't believe in. I'm much more interested in what I do think and believe, which I know I should be able to use that word, but I don't like to. I don't, I try to avoid the words that I used as a theist I challenge myself to go ahead and find other ones, find other ways to express myself. I want to be thinking as much as possible. As I had a long time that I was a theist. I uh, guess, and I wanted you to know that if you feel yourself pulling out your hair in frustration when you talk with theists, I was that theist. <laughs> I was that person that okay. you went around the tree several times. I was hunting heffalumps with wow. Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, finding more and more tracks. The more times I went around the tree. But lastly, I think that we, the deconverted, have a morose need of community. You know, all of us ex theists, we it's like we want to go back and have something like what we had in church. We have this hangover, if you will. We aren't unlike a spiritual AA group, minus the whole higher power thing. These deconverted stories also remind me of testimonial night. You know, get up and tell your tell your story. And <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I, I sometimes I used to question that, didn't you? I mean, it was like um, who could tell the best 
story about what they did before they were a Christian, and you got the feeling that they were really reveling in that a little bit too much, you know. Oh, I was such a hellion. <laughs> Which is really funny when you think about it, these videos, but uh, anyway, yeah, all right. And I guess I, I wonder how atheists view these videos. It's, I mean, who've been lifelong atheists, like, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I don't know what this means to anything, but honestly, what I value is seeing the road ahead by looking back at the one I've traveled. If it gives you some insight into Whoa. yourself or into theists, um, then I, I'm happy to share that. I'll try to be as brutally honest as I can, although i got to admit, I, I find it hard to be. I find it hard to be simply because filmed the the sheer weight of my life and the choices I made because of theism sometimes they get me really hard um, I think that Seth from the <laughs> thinking atheist said I'm one of those feely Christians right you know you can tell um, <laughs> so I I have to daily forgive myself for the way that I let it lead me and uh, remind myself that hey you know it's a do-over from this point on life's a do-over and I'm learning and I'm growing so I hope to not to bunny trail too much on you that's what the edit buttons for because I do that it's practical magic nine saying be excellent to one another because this is the only shot we have as far as we know out.